The Loopring project is building an Ethereum Layer 2 scaling protocol that aims to significantly reduce congestion on the Ethereum blockchain. In part 2 of our video series, we'll take a deeper look at Loopring's products and see how it compares to other Ethereum scaling projects. Hi guys, my name is AG Hunter and my goal is to help you make good investment decisions by providing quality analysis of crypto projects. If you like what you see in this video, please hit like and subscribe. My YouTube channel is still very new, so every engagement really helps. Also, if you have any feedback or suggestions, please leave a comment below and I will get back to you. Today we are going to launch into part 2 of our review of the Loopring project. In part one, we covered what the project is about and the technology the team have developed to solve the scaling problems we see with the Ethereum network. Today, we're gonna to look at the products the team is building on top of its technology. We'll also take a broader look at the different technologies being developed to scale Ethereum and we'll see how Loopring compares to some of its competitors. Before we start, I need to make the standard disclaimer that I'm not a financial advisor. All investments are inherently risky and you should do your own research before making any investment decisions. All the links to the materials I've used to prepare this video will be in the comments below so you can do your own investment investigation if what I say makes you curious to know more. Before we launch into a review of the products that Loopring offers, you need to understand a bit about using Loopring to understand how everything works. The first thing to understand is that Loopring is a completely different environment to Ethereum. It is linked, but when you use Loopring, you are operating completely separately to the Ethereum main chain. The terms Layer 1 and Layer 2 are often used to refer to Ethereum and Loopring respectively, and it's important to understand that while these two layers talk to each other, they are completely separate. What does this mean? Well, the first thing this means is that you need to create an account with Loopring before you can use the products offered by the team. Your Loopring account is linked directly to your Ethereum wallet, meaning that it mirrors your Ethereum wallet address so to speak, but it's still a separate account. This creates a couple of obstacles straight away. The first is that it costs money to register your Loopring account. When I opened my account, it cost me 13 US dollars, which was the gas cost for setting up the account and linking it back to my main chain Ethereum address. Then once your account is open, it's still empty of funds. The balance of your Ethereum wallet does not automatically come across to Loopring, so you have to transfer funds in. This was another $13 on the day that I did it. Once you see the savings in gas costs that you can achieve by using Loopring, I don't think that these fees are high enough to stop you using the project. They are there. The need to have an account also means you can only transact with other users who have Loopring accounts. So if I was to sell some tokens on Loopring's exchange and then transfer these funds to another user, I could only do this if that user also had a Loopring account. If they don't have a Loopring account, then I need to withdraw my funds back to the main chain, which is another cost in terms of gas, and then do a normal transfer on the Ethereum main net. So it's clunky and potentially expensive to use Loopring currently. If you are doing a lot of trades or transactions, then the cost savings of using Loopring far outweigh these costs as I'll show, but single transactions aren't well supported currently. It's really important to note here that there is a new version of Loopring being released in November 2020. It's called Loopring 3.6. There are a lot of changes in this upgrade, one of which is the cost of opening an account will come down by about 97%. It will also go some way towards solving the issues of having to open an account and the interoperability issues between layer one and layer two. So while these are problems at the moment, there are solutions in the works and the system will be much more user-friendly in the very near future. Once you have an account and have funds deposited in that account, then you're in business and can start using the system. I'll now take you through a brief tour of the various products that Loopring has built on top of its technology. The first of these, and still its main one, is the Loopring decentralized exchange. I'll refer to this as the Loopring DEX from here on. You will remember from video one that Loopring started out trying to build a decentralized order book style exchange. An order book style exchange is something like Binance or Coinbase where there are multiple buy and sell orders for a given token on the exchange at any one time. Loopring's DEX is live and open for trading. It has a sleek user interface and is very easy to use. I made a simple transaction to test the system and everything was very smooth. I didn't pay a fee for the trade and I believe that this is because Loopring is subsidizing gas costs in an attempt to onboard new users, but from other reviews I've seen, I believe that the ongoing fees will be around two cents per transaction. I did the same trade on Uniswap at the same time and the gas fee was $6.21. And gas fees were pretty low on the day that I looked at all this. I've paid $20 per trade lately and I've heard of other users needing to pay up to $40. So as a one for one comparison, the cost of trading on Loopring is about two cents per transaction as opposed to trading on Uniswap, which can be anywhere between six and $40 per transaction. One of my main concerns with using a new exchange was around liquidity, but as you can see from the screenshots, the difference in price I achieved for my purchase was negligible. Increased adoption will further reduce any liquidity problems that do arise. Overall, I had a very positive experience with the DEX. I honestly can't see myself using Uniswap again when the cost savings on Loopring are so significant. There are only a limited number of tokens listed on Loopring currently, 
but this will increase once version 3.6 is released and as more users adopt the system. Overall, I think the Loopring DEX is a great product. In addition to hosting their own exchange, Loopring also enables other exchange providers to base their exchanges on the Loopring protocol. As every transaction that takes place on the Loopring protocol incurs a small fee, this could be a substantial source of revenue if Loopring is adopted more widely. There is currently one other small Chinese-based exchange using Loopring services. A portion of the fees generated are paid as a staking reward to holders of the Loopring token who choose to stake that token. The next big feature that Loopring has rolled out is the ability to do payments. I wasn't able to try this feature, but the logic is the same as we have discussed previously. The bundling achieved by the roller reduces fees for payments in the same way that it does for trades. In short, Loopring allows you to send supported tokens for a fraction of the cost of using the Ethereum mainnet. Sending ETH for one or two cents per transaction is very attractive. In addition to hosting other exchanges on the Loopring protocol, Loopring also makes its relayer service available to other users for a fee. The relayer is the entity that bundles the transactions into the rollup and performs the cryptographic proof that is used to establish validity. This is a significant piece of software and as such would be expensive to develop independently. Access to this service significantly reduces the upfront cost for any project wishing to jump onto the Loopring layer 2 and therefore seems to be good for encouraging wider adoption of Loopring's scaling solution. It could also be a significant source of revenue for Loopring. However, I do not believe that any of this revenue currently accrues to Loopring token holders. The final aspect of the project that I will cover is the Loopring smart contract wallet. Alongside the rollout of Loopring 3.6, this seems to be the other main focus of the development team in the second half of 2020. There is little detail as to what this will actually look like, but conceptually it's a mobile app with the ZK rollup protocol embedded in it that will allow access to the DEX and payments functionality from your mobile. Assuming the user interface is good, this would be a great advancement and could encourage further adoption of the project. Currently in alpha testing, there is no firm release date that I am aware of, but I believe the team are aiming to move to beta testing in mid to late October 2020. The biggest draw card of Loopring is the ability to trade and transfer for almost no fee. A gas fee of one or two cents a trade is so vastly superior to the current situation on exchanges like Uniswap that these layer one legacy exchanges will not be able to compete if projects like Loopring are able to scale. Scaling, however, is key. If Loopring scales, then it's conceivable that you could transfer assets into the Loopring layer two and then do all of your trades and payments without ever having to leave Loopring. You would have all the security of transacting with the Ethereum main chain without having to pay the gas. This, combined with the good user interface and functionality of the Loopring exchange, make this an attractive proposition. It does require wide-scale adoption of Loopring, however. If most users choose to stay in Layer 1 or choose to use a different Layer 2 scaling solution, then the requirement to constantly move assets in and out of Loopring likely makes the project a non-starter for many users. That's not to say that Loopring can't survive as a niche offering. Using Loopring will make sense for high-volume traders, regardless of the entry and exit costs, due to the tiny transaction cost for each individual trade. For broader adoption, however, However, scale is the key. If wide scale adoption is the key to the project's success, then it makes sense to look at the competitors in this space to see what obstacles exist to Loopring achieving the scale it needs. It's a very crowded market and there are many projects working in this space trying to get a slice of what could be a very lucrative pie if they are successful. All have a slightly different method of tackling the scaling problem. The most obvious of these is the Ethereum project itself and the introduction of Ethereum 2.0. The competition doesn't stop with Ethereum, however. There are other ZK rollup providers like ZK Sync, which is employing the same technology as Loopring but with a slightly different application. There are also a variety of optimistic roll-up projects like Optimism, which promises to offer the same reduction in fees and increase in transactions per second with greater computational flexibility than Loopring can currently offer. Finally, there are multiple Plasma solutions being developed. OMG Network was very early in this game, but other projects like Matic and the MIT Crypto Labs are also working on this solution. In looking at some of these competitors, it's beyond the scope of this video to go into detail on each project. The differences between the projects are sometimes subtle and often technical, meaning you could easily dedicate a separate video to each. What I will do for the most part is simply introduce the project, give a brief overview of what it's trying to do, and point you in the direction of some additional resources if you want to know more. First and most obviously is Ethereum 2.0. Once the full rollout of the first phase of Ethereum 2.0 is complete, we should see an increase in transactions per second of about 1,000 fold. This will take Ethereum's possible throughput from about 10 transactions per second currently to upwards of 10,000 transactions per second. There is a clear risk with any of these scaling projects that Ethereum 2.0 could be so significant successful that it makes all of the layer 2 solutions obsolete. Whilst this is a possibility, I think it's unlikely that this will occur for a couple of reasons. Number one is that when you hear Vitalik talk about Ethereum scaling, he always talks about Ethereum 2.0 working hand in hand with layer 2 scaling solutions. 
he clearly sees the two solutions coexisting for the short to medium term at least. In this situation, you get the benefits both of the underlying blockchain increasing its capacity, plus the layer 2 sitting atop that main chain magnifying this capacity again. There is no need for the layer 2 solution to go away once layer 1 is scaled. The two can coexist indefinitely, provided layer 2 technology keeps pace with the changes to the main chain. Secondly, it seems like Ethereum 2.0 is always six months away. It's a massive project and it's taking much longer than was originally expected. In mid-2017, I bought an Ethereum cloud mining contract and I clearly remember that one of the risks at that time was that proof of stake could be introduced before the two-year contract expired. Well, it's now 2020 and staking... Well, it's still a few months away at least. Staking is also just the first of the three phases that compromise Ethereum 2.0. The full rollout is expected to take more than two years. So there is significant opportunity for layer two solutions to gain a foothold in the interim and to demonstrate value. Which brings me to my third point. Network effects are important. Another way to say this is that it's highly possible that the first technology wins the race, not the best technology. If you look at Microsoft Windows, there are plenty of people who will tell you that it's not the best operating system, yet everyone still uses it. Why? Because everybody else uses it got to the market early, launched a product that lots of people used, and now it's dominant. This situation is common in many technology settings. I think it's likely that something similar happens here. If a project can launch a product that offers value to its users, it has a two to three year window to build out a market position before Ethereum 2.0 is fully launched. Even if 2.0 is as good as promised, there is no reason that everybody will just drop whatever products they've been using in the interim. The opportunity to build out products is significant and may be enough to give some projects a lasting competitive advantage regardless of what happens on the main chain. There are also many projects working with the technology known as Plasma. I will put them all together for the sake of brevity. Plasma was the first scaling technology proposed for Ethereum. OMG Network was one of the early adopters of this tech and still employs it today. Plasma also involves moving a lot of transactions off the main chain in order to speed up the network. Plasma has the potential to be very fast, much faster than rollups or Ethereum 2.0, but the concept ran into an issue with what is known as the data availability problem. The data availability problem arises when you take transactions off chain and therefore away from the security provided by the Ethereum main chain. In very simple terms, it means what happens to my funds or my information if the provider of the scaling solution I'm using goes offline or does something fraudulent. Because you are transacting away from the main Ethereum blockchain, you do not automatically enjoy the security of Ethereum and in many applications are at the mercy of a third party. Different projects solve this problem in different ways. Plasma projects in general found this problem very hard to solve and many would argue that they still haven't solved it. So while some projects are working with Plasma, many observers believe that Plasma is a dying technology and unlikely to be part of the long-term future of Ethereum. At least not in its current form. One sign of this is that one of the early champions of Plasma, the Plasma Group, has now rebranded as Optimism and is working on optimistic rollups instead. Next, we'll look at ZK Sync. This is probably the closest competitor to Loopring in terms of product offering. Matter Labs, the team behind ZK Sync, also uses ZK rollups as their scaling solution. Where Loopring initially focused on exchanges, ZK Sync is focused on payments, and their first product is a layer two payment protocol offering fast transfers and payments at significantly reduced cost. Like Loopring, ZK Sync's product products are live on the Ethereum mainnet today. ZK Sync is now focused on enabling more complex smart contracts using ZK Proofs. This project is very similar to Loopring and the differences between the two seem reasonably technical. I've included some references below for those interested in further reading. Starkware is another project looking to implement ZK Proof technology. The biggest difference here is that Starkware uses ZK Starks, not ZK Snarks, as their zero proof mechanism. A ZK Stark is simply a different type of zero knowledge proof, so the differences between these two projects are very technical. I haven't done a deep dive on this project, but after a quick look around, it appears as though they are trying to use ZK proofs to solve some of the problems with Plasma. If successful, this would potentially give them the scalability of Plasma solutions without the data availability issues that came with this technology. Finally, we get to optimistic rollups. As mentioned earlier, Optimism is one of the leading projects in this space. I went into a lot of detail in my first video on the differences between ZK rollups and optimistic rollups. A brief summary here is that ZK rollups are much faster but are limited in the types of transactions they can do. Optimistic rollups can do a lot more but they are much slower to do it. The Ethereum community are very excited by optimistic rollups and many see them as the holy grail of the scaling problem. My interpretation of the race here is that it comes down to which technology can progress faster. Can ZK rollups expand the kinds of transactions they can do faster than optimistic rollups can solve the issues around speed of verification? Whichever solution gets there first wins. 
While the optimism around optimistic rollups is high, no one has yet successfully implemented an optimistic rollup solution on chain, so there is still some work to do here. Having looked at the different competitors, I'll conclude by taking you through a couple of different scenarios that I could see unfolding. The first is the Ethereum 2.0 takes all scenario. In this situation, Ethereum 2.0 is so spectacularly successful that it takes all of the market share available for layer 2 scaling solutions and is the only solution that survives. As I've highlighted above, I don't think this is likely, but it's certainly possible. Possibility 2 is that Ethereum 2.0 forms a hub off which other projects build out niche solutions. Potentially, we end up with a situation where Plasma solutions are used for transactions, ZK rollups are used for exchanges, and optimistic rollups are used for complex transactions. I think this is the most probable situation in the short to medium term, by which I mean the next two to three years. It's also dependent on whether technical issues can be solved. Can ZK rollups be modified to do complex solutions? Can the verification issues of optimistic rollups be solved? A third possible situation is where once again, Ethereum 2.0 forms a hub and one dominant solution takes the bulk of the market. This is the situation where either ZK rollups or optimistic rollups become clearly better than the alternatives and therefore take up all of the market share available to layer two solutions. I think this is quite likely longer term and which technology wins really depends on who overcomes their limitations first. All of the preceding discussion also depends on Ethereum maintaining its position as the preeminent smart contract solution. So if you assume that Ethereum continues to exist, then I think it's fair to also assume that at least one of the layer two scaling solutions we've discussed also continues to be successful. I'll conclude with a brief summary of the investment case for Loopring. Firstly, and I think very importantly, it has a working technology and is building out products for consumers today. Its products offer real value and feel a need in the market. Its DEX also looks great and is simple to use. The project has been around for a long time and has a track record that many of its peers lack and it's in the market now and has a first mover advantage over many of these same peers. I'm not confident enough to pick Loopring as a definitive winner in this space, but it's definitely a project to watch. If you're still watching, I just want to thank you for staying all the way to the end. If you like what you saw today, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe. You also might like to check out one of my other videos, which you can see linked on the screen now. Finally, if you have any questions, feedback or comments, please leave them below. Thanks for watching.